Today's episode is sponsored by Honey, the easy way to save when you're shopping on your iPhone or computer. I mean, you know, I feel great when I find a deal. I feel very smart. I feel lucky. I feel excited. You know, when I'm surprised by a deal, I feel like I'm getting a treat for free. Thanks to Honey, manually searching for coupon codes is a thing of the past. Honey is the free shopping tool that scours the internet for promo codes and applies the best one. You know, because you don't want to be the person with the clipping of the coupons. You know, I had relatives that would do that. They would clip coupons and then they would go to the grocery store and then they would, you know, uh, buy things with the coupons. And now on the internet, there's a version of that where you're just looking for promo codes all day. But then, you know, you don't want to be that person. But what Honey does is they scour the thing so you don't have to. Okay? Imagine you're shopping at one of your favorite sites. When you check out, the Honey button appears, and all you have to do is click Apply Coupons. Wait a few seconds as Honey searches for coupons. It can find for that site. If Honey finds a working coupon, you'll watch the prices drop. I just started using it. It saved me money, okay? I love it. I mean, you know, Honey saved me money. I was ordering clothes the other day on the internet, and then Honey had a coupon, and it saved me money. It was great. I loved it. Honey doesn't just work on desktops. It works on your iPhone, too. Just activate it on Safari, on your phone, and save on the go. If you don't already have Honey, you could be straight up missing out. And by getting it, you'll be doing yourself a solid and supporting this show. Get PayPal Honey for free. Join Honey.com slash Tim D. That's join Honey.com slash Tim D. Tomorrow, Monterey, California. Friday, uh, Vancouver, Canada. Saturday, Napa, California. March through the 9th through the 11th, I'll be in Palm Beach, Florida. Our rescheduled Raleigh dates, the 24th and the 25th in Raleigh, North Carolina. Thursday, April 13th, Inglewood, New Jersey. Friday, April 14th, Huntington, New York. Saturday, April 15th, New Brunswick, New Jersey. Sunday, April 16th, Huntington, New York. We also have shows being announced in places like Tacoma and Portland and San Francisco very, very soon. Enjoy the episode. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Tim Dillon Show. We are going to be a Monday show. We are uploading uh, today, Tuesday, uh, because we got back late from uh, Arizona where we did a bunch of shows, sold them out in Phoenix and Tucson. I think Tucson was sold out. We were close. Um, thanks to everybody who came out. It was a lot of fun. I, I spent uh, almost a week there in the desert. And uh, I like Arizona. I like it because it's a state that is evenly divided between uh, retirees and psychopaths. Yeah. Um, those are the two uh, largest demographic groups in Arizona, people that are retired and people who are psychotic. And that's a fun mix because there's one side constantly trying to drag some of the people into their side. Like the psychopaths, they get a few of the retirees to come onto their side. <laughs> they pull them. It's like that thing in gym where you would tug a war and you would try to pull people. Uh, and the psychopaths occasionally will pull some of the retirees, and then some of the retirees will pull some of the psychopaths and just be like, hey, man, how about just chill? How about just fucking swing a golf club? Um, but it's that natural tension between retiree and psychopath, which is what the desert is. That's the whole desert. Uh, but it was a lot of fun there. We enjoyed ourselves. We are now the official podcast sponsor of the Ukraine war. This is something that I'm very excited about. We beat out... Um, a lot of the other podcasts, we beat out uh, My Favorite Murder. We beat out Last Podcast on the Left. We beat out uh, The Girls Gotta Eat, to the, the, the girls that sling the vibrators. Uh, <laughs> we beat them uh, to be the official sponsor of the Ukraine War. We are the show that sponsors the Ukraine War as a podcast. Now, that doesn't mean we want it to keep going just because we are the official sponsor of the Ukraine war, we don't want it to keep going. However, as long as it does keep going, uh, we do realize that war can be beautiful and teach us beautiful things about ourselves and the world around us. Um, and that makes us the official sponsor of uh, the Ukraine war as a podcast, uh, similar to America, who is sponsoring the Ukraine war, but doesn't want it to keep going. But if it does, if it happens to... Uh, it should be um, beautiful. Our president, remember when this started a year ago, the Ukraine war? Remember about a year ago, the Ukraine war started, Russia invaded the Ukraine, and the idea was that there would be some type of push for peace, that this would end or someone would want this to end, um, and that has not been the case. We are now a year in, and... Uh, 
you know, now we're saying like Biden's gone out and said like Russia will never win in Ukraine. So it's the American position that Russia has to lose, which is, uh, I understand why that's the Ukrainian position, but it's the American position now that Russia has to lose, which is different from the American position saying we would like peace. Peace would mean, or you would think it would mean, that both countries made some arrangement, agreement, and that the fighting war would cease. Um, there'd be a treaty. We know it, how this works. But now President Biden has come out and said uh, there will be no victory for Russia in Ukraine. Russia will never win, which, of course, means that Russia will lose. And then he made a surprise visit to the capital uh, on Monday, and he was like, it was very secretive and sexy. And because the whole thing with Biden now is because he's old and he's kind of enfeebled and he, he doesn't know how to speak. They have to dress him up as he's like a tough guy and he's tough. And it's like, he doesn't give a shit. And, you know, look at him walking next to Zelensky. And, you know, it's like Mr. Biden arrived early Monday morning to meet with President Zelensky. This is the New York Times. After a 10-hour overnight train ride, which he slept through probably. Um, but the two stepped out into the streets of Kiev, even as an air raid siren sounded. A dramatic moment that underscored the investment the United States has made in the Ukraine's independence. By the way, it's clear they want Biden dead, like the people... <laughs> Like, the people that are worried that he may not be a good candidate, they're like, yeah, 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 go over there, show your support, walk around in the street, you and Zelensky, make out, whatever you have to do, make sure you're in the public, make sure you see a bunch of people. Um, Biden was there for only five hours, uh, and he promised to release another $500 million in military aid in coming days. $500 million. Uh, dollars. Now, the Ukraine wants some real deal arms because Ukraine is now saying, we want to go into Red Square. We want to push into Russia. You know, we want to bring down the regime in Russia. Uh, Russia is now pulled out of a nuclear proliferation treaty uh, with us. Symbolic, for sure. Who knows? Not that treaties keep people from doing anything they want to do anyway. Um, but, you know, this is... It's become a uh, incredibly... And it's sad that anybody is dying, right? So we all feel bad for any civilian in the Ukraine that has been killed, anybody in Russia that has been drafted in to go fight this war. We feel bad for anybody that's life is being thrown into the abyss. You're throwing these people's lives uh, into this black hole. Um, but, you know, now, now we are basically saying, like, we're in, we like it, we like it. The idea that we don't like the Ukraine war has to be destroyed. We love it. We have a war of white people in which we can throw hundreds of billions, maybe more, at we enjoy it. We like it. It's good for the weapons industry. It's good for our... Uh, and by the way, what else are we going to talk about? The trains that keep derailing with the poison? We don't want to do that. We're going to talk about the kids in Ohio who are being refused lunch. We're going to talk about that later. But what do, we, what do we really have to say? We like talking about the Ukraine war. It's good for our country to take the focus off of the things that we don't really love about what's happening in our country and put it on the Ukraine. Um, and we kind of like, it's a, it's a fun pastime right now. It's like sports, the Super Bowl's over. So this is kind of the new thing. This is another article here uh, in the New York Times, which the New York Times is now the official like US, it's always been, but like specifically for this war. Um, very exciting, very exciting here. Not Peace, mind you, not steps towards peace. Um, in, the, in the New York Times, some of the best weapons in the world are now in Ukraine. They may change the war. So we're now celebrating the weaponry that we sent. Not, not any steps 
towards any type of agreement that would stop fighting. Tens of billions of dollars of weapons have flowed from Europe and North American countries into the Ukraine. Rifles, bullets, missiles, artillery. Yeah, baby. At first, the nations insisted that the weapons were defensive, designed to help the Ukraine fight off the invasion. One year later, as the battered but still potent Russian military prepares for a renewed offensive, the type of weapons heading into Ukraine have changed dramatically. Now they're getting the good stuff. Now they're getting the stuff that they've kind of always wanted. The distinction, my, my favorite uh, line here, the distinction between offensive and defensive weapons was always a little bit arbitrary. <laughs> it's a little bit arbitrary. It doesn't really matter what we're giving them. Are we giving them things to defend themselves or to keep this going or to push in to expand the scope of the war, we don't know. We're just giving them fun stuff, and they're having fun. And that's just good old-fashioned American uh, money laundering, uh, slush fund, uh, you know, empire-building stuff. This is what we do. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm just, uh, you know, it's un it's unfortunate. We're... We're, um, we're, we're enjoying this, though, and we're, we're enjoying it a little too much. It's a little scary how much we're liking it. Um, it's, it's Biden's, you know, he's just allowing him to seem strapping and cool. Remember Boris Johnson in the UK did this when he went to visit with Putin. I'm sorry, when he went to visit with Zelensky. If you are an embattled leader in your country, you just visit Zelensky and you walk around Kiev for a few hours and it's a nice boost. It's a boost to the numbers. I think, by the way, people, Army Hammer should do that. Why are celebrities not doing that? Why are celebrities, why don't canceled celebrities visit Keith? <laughs> Get Harvey Weinstein out of jail, have him walk next to Zelensky down a main street in Kiev, Kiev, whatever, and I think you could be looking at a good boost in numbers. Bill Cosby's on tour. I've got his first tour date. Keith. This is how much we love the war, how much we're enjoying it. We have an article in the New Yorker, Can Psychedelics Heal Ukrainians' Trauma? So we're basically like, let's not end the trauma. Let's not end it. Microdose mushrooms, take some psychedelics, get a shaman, take some ayahuasca. It'll be like the war's not even happening. You can therapeutically cleanse yourself of war. We're not going to stop the actual war. But you can feel better about the war with a nice psychedelic regimen. Meanwhile, in New York, a Ukrainian delegation, including a representative for the Territorial Defense Forces, had gathered to consider types of aid, other types of aid. The goal, according to an ad for the event, was to promote the psychological and spiritual resilience of Ukrainian people living in trauma, <laughs> crisis, and war. <laughs> it's the psychological resilience. We're promoting your, it's tough. We know it's tough. We know it's tough, and we know that we could maybe, in a way, kind of push for some type of peace talks, but we're not going to do that. We're not going to stop this war. In fact, we're going to pour gasoline. We are now pouring gasoline on this, it's wrong that Putin invaded. All war is terrible. But the idea that we want this to stop is kind of hilarious. And now we're basically telling the Ukrainians, you better get, you better use drugs because we're not ending this shit. So you better start using psychedelic drugs. Uh, you know, whatever it is. Here's great. Dmitriev, whoever this guy is, kicked things off by telling this group, okay? through a translator, that he hopes to train 1,500 <laughs> military chaplains in special spiritual resilience program. <laughs> so the new plan for the Ukraine war is to have the chaplains act as shamans and guide people through microdosing and ayahuasca so they can feel better about this war. Um, so they can work through their trauma. And I'm not saying psychedelics don't have um, a place in, in, in therapy of trauma. Here's what also is really good in terms of the therapy and trauma. Stopping the trauma! <laughs> Stopping the trauma! Not spending billions of dollars to keep the trauma going! 
going. That helps as well. Yes, stitches can help wounds. Also, not throwing a kid off a fucking roof. Like, <laughs> there's, there's other ways to calm this fucking thing down. But as the official sponsor of uh, the Ukraine uh, war, we like, we, we like the idea that we are participating in a very confusing uh, battle where there are no real clear objectives and very little identifiable national interest. So we can just kind of rev this baby, rev it up, let it go. 20 years, a 20 year uh, war here would be our best case scenario. A 20 year war that bleeds Russia dry. Now, here's the other thing I want to get into because I, I mean, you know, the Ukraine, we'll check in on it every now and then. It's the year anniversary. Congrats, but we're not going to, we, we can't, you know, it can't be all Ukraine all the time, even though we are the official sponsor of the Ukraine war and will continue to be. And we will provide uh, people in the Ukraine uh, with whatever they need, whether it be uh, uh, shroom tea or whatever helps them deal with the uh, bombings that uh, our money and support uh, guarantees will not end. Also, uh, China is now stepping in. So China... Our favorite country, China. My godson, uh, uh, China's President Xi Jinping, um, he's going to, Chinese leaders expected to use Moscow trip to push for multi-party peace talks. So China is actually, uh, thank God, someone's running the world. China is now stepping up to uh, do a peace treaty in the Ukraine. China is stepping up to do it. Whereas America... Uh, we are, you know, proceeding with the ayahuasca uh, retreats. Um, Beijing says it wants to play a more active role aimed at ending the conflict. Boo! Maybe they're not going to end it either. I don't know. I'm not going to take them at their word for it. Maybe nobody wants it to end. And the people familiar with uh, Xi's trip plans uh, said a meeting with Mr. Putin would be a part of the push. Nobody wants this war to end. I have a bit about it on stage. I don't really want it to end. Nobody wants it to end. I'm sorry. We can't have it end now. We're in it. It's just a good pillar of the news. Nobody wants it to end. It's accomplishing a lot of things for a lot of people. There's a lot of people with financial interest in this. We can't have it end. We don't want any nukes because that's mean. But what we want is just a, a prolonged conflict there. This is not something anyone wants to stop. I'm telling you. Nobody wants, I don't think China wants to stop this either. Maybe they do. Maybe, maybe. And what are these people whining now about? Here's the deal with climate change. We're all dealing with it in our own way. It's been freezing in Los Angeles. The winds are insane. Everybody's upset. Why are these people in Palestine, Ohio, getting all of the attention? Everybody's <laughs> dealing with this. Every single group of people in America is dealing with this. My friend who had a beautiful waterfront in Florida, it's like down to the studs now. Now, of course, she wanted to do a renovation. Anyway, it kind of comes in handy, and she has a place up in the Hudson Valley she can go. The point is, she's dealing with a horrible situation in Florida where she has to renovate her house um, because it was just destroyed. So these people in East Palestine, Ohio, uh, that are complaining about this train derailment constantly. I don't understand why they're sucking up all the oxygen, and that's, I'm not trying to do a pun. Um, I don't get it. I don't get what the big deal is. A train crashed with some chemicals, and now you have some headaches, and you're itchy. What's the big deal? This puts you on the map. EPA chief Ohio governor drink tap water near train derailment site after heavy growth. What's the, pro they're drinking it. What's the problem? I'm sick of these people just because, oh, the sky is full of black smoke and, oh, I have a horrible headache. I can't sleep. I'm itching. My kids are screaming. There's no more shared sacrifice anymore. Okay, 11 cars carrying toxic chemicals. <laughs> whatever, derailed as a train passed through the town on the Ohio-Pennsylvania border. Officials conducted a controlled 
burn of the spilled chemicals to prevent an explosion. They're trying to help you. Um, releasing large plumes of dangerous chemicals into the air that left foul smells in the area and has reportedly made livestock and pets sick. Um, I think the people here are overreacting. Um, I knew people, a lot of people that went down to ground zero and uh, breathed the, the air in at ground zero and some of them are alive. So I just think that like, I understand people being upset, but it really you have to look at, is this just, do you just want attention? Is that really what it is? Is it like, oh, no one's ever talked about Palestine, Ohio, and this is the time for now people to just get attention. Where, can you, are there like some type, oh, look at that. That looks, that does, can we bring that up? <laughs> this looks not bad. This is from what, space? Yeah, from space. <sighs> this is not even a big deal, this thing. This is a small train derailment with 11 cars with a few toxic chemicals, a controlled burn in the air that's uh, giving people um, headaches for days, they can't sleep, uh, and their pets are dying. But other than that, I don't see a huge problem here. And I think really this is just, again, a bunch of people in the middle of Ohio that want to go Hollywood. This is, the, this is a culture of reality TV freaks who want attention. Do we have any of the... Uh, People, like, are there any of the citizens of Ohio? Can we hear from them? Are they, I mean, can we at least, like, hear why um, this is being dominating the news cycle constantly and I'm unable to understand why this is getting more pressed in an incredibly freezing cold winter in Los Angeles that is forcing me and several of my friends indoors when many of the houses are built for indoor-outdoor living? Many of them are built literally for indoor-outdoor living where you have a, a, a pane of glass separating the inside and the outside. I don't even understand. And all I hear about is, is this. It's uh, Palestine, Ohio. Uh, the train, we're mad. Uh, the people in Ohio are mad. Their pets have headaches. It's like, guys, can we please? You have to enjoy it. Stop being paranoid about everything. It's just 11 cars of toxic chemicals. You know, I think that it's a bunch of people being babies. It's a bunch of big babies. Just get out there. Throw a Frisbee. Get out there and move. Get out there. Get your steps in. You know, these people aren't lying. They're not going to lie. Do you think they would tell you that water was okay to drink if it wasn't? Do you believe the government would do that? Do you think they would tell you that the air was okay to breathe just so that you wouldn't, there wouldn't be mass panic? Do you think they would lie to you? just so they wouldn't be mass panic. And then years later, when many of you pop up with uh, weird illnesses that can't be traced to anything except the fact that you all lived in East Palestine, Ohio, during the train derailment, uh, do you think that is, like, realistic? That sounds like a movie. That doesn't sound like something that would actually happen, like, you know, five years from now when you know, people can't breathe and people just, you know, in the middle of the night start uh, expiring. Uh, yeah, I mean, that sounds like a movie. I think that it is safe. I think it's okay. I don't think it's a big deal. I think it's cool as fuck, actually. The amount of fucking photos and fucking cool shit now happening in your community where nothing has ever happened. No one's ever heard of this place. And now it's, it's getting all their fucking attention. The TikToks coming out of there. People get noticed for the first goddamn time. Be a chemical spill influencer. Like, <laughs> use this to get yourself on track to making people know who you are. If you're a reasonably good-looking person in East Palestine, Ohio, get out there and start dancing in front of the smoke. I'm telling you, this is your... Don't let this pass you by. <laughs> when Parkland happened, those kids got famous. Greta Thunberg's been famous, right? You need to be... If, if, if there is a young climate activist, this is your time right now. Your time to recognize you don't have to go to college uh, or if you do, it can get paid for. You don't have to have a shitty job. You can get out there and make this your brand. I mean, 
I'm telling you, the media will eat it up. They'll eat you alive. Um, just do it. You know, people are complaining about uh, headaches, chest tightness, eye pain. This is a 28-year-old told BuzzFeed News. You know, a lot. It's, a, it's anxiety. You have anxiety. This is what this town has. They have anxiety. This isn't real. This isn't something that's happening to you just because of the uh, toxic uh, burn, control burn of the chemicals. This is, uh, you're anxious and you're nervous because you're getting your moment in the national spotlight. You don't, you wonder if you measure up <laughs> and you might not, but that's really what it is. Like you are anxious and it's sad, but I, I, I don't think we have to go and, 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 oh, the worst cough. I've had shortness of breath and the worst cough I've ever had in my life. Drama queen, will you stop? What is this, the long COVID crowd now? Because the train flipped over? Enough. Nearly one million pounds of vinyl chloride were on this train. Now the EPA has confirmed it's entered the Ohio River Basin, which is home to 25 million. Ba What's wrong with vinyl chloride? This is one of the deadliest environmental emergencies in decades, and no one is talking about it. Vinyl chloride is not only flammable, but it's also brain, lung, blood, and liver carcinogen. Authorities decided to burn hundreds of thousands of gallons of this chemical after a train derailment in East Palestine, Ohio. Well, what could have happened, they said, is if it would exploded, it would have sent shrapnel for a mile. One mile. And you would have been like sitting in a chair and then it would have been like final destination. So what they did was they decided to burn off the chemicals in like a controlled burn and then tell everyone that it's just chill, you know? And I think that that's the problem right now is people are not acting chill. Pretend that nothing's happening. You're suffering from anxiety. I don't think people are complaining about the smell too. They're saying the smell is like a mix of super glue and bleach, but it has a bit of sweetness. <laughs> Focus on the sweetness. Glass half full. Focus on the sweetness. It could be worse. It could be like the kids in Ohio. I, I was reading about these school lunches, and apparently I don't understand this. Um, during COVID, apparently people in Ohio were given... Uh, free lunch for the kids. Kids were able to eat food for free. And now they are not. The school lunch program in Ohio is ending. Uh, and that means that people are going to pay, I think it's 2 or $3 a day um, uh, for, $2 a I mean, it's $2 a day per child, okay? But some parents are struggling and they don't have that. Um, and so basically they're coming out and saying, they're taking, I'm not even kidding. This is not even a joke. They are taking the trays from the children yep. who cannot pay. They are taking the food back from the kids. Uh, quote, that was a little heartbreaking for my staff to deny children and take the tray away. <laughs> they are taking the tray away from children in Ohio... And they are giving billions of dollars to the Ukraine for weapons. So just process all that in your head. Um, now, I'm trying to think if there's any reason somebody would be against a school lunch. Because I know that, like a free school lunch. Because I know that that is kind of an issue that people debate. And I know that it's kind of a contentious issue. I could see... You know, my father said to me once, a hungry dog runs the farthest. And I'm so I'm thinking now, is that potentially the thinking there? Like, you know, sometimes it's good to motivate a kid. So when the kids come into the lunchroom and they all have their lunches and they're all eating and one kid uh, or a few can't afford the lunch and they go to grab the tray and you take it from them and go, no, it's not yours. And then they have to sit there, their blood sugar drops, and they kind of get listless, and they're upset. Does that motivate them to, like, go home and learn about the stock market? 
I don't know. That is a good question. Like, what is, why can't we just make food for all of the kids? You'd think that we could just have enough money to make a lunch that would feed all of the children. But maybe there is a reason that some of the children shouldn't eat. And that's something that I think we do have to explore. Number one, kids are fat. So maybe they're just denying the fat kids food, which I think helps if they, maybe if they just sat all the fat kids at a table, or maybe the fat kids uh, made them like work out during lunch. So when all the other kids are given food, the fat kids, maybe they're put in a, a side of the, uh, you know, uh, cafeteria and they're made to, um, you know, I don't know, jump around. But um, I, I don't, I, I'm trying to think of what, what would be a good reason to not pay for love? Maybe the kids, if the kid, will it teach them to not work hard if we keep giving them like a free $2 lunch a day? Like if we give them ZD or we give them the hot dog, does that just create complacency where they're unable to function? I don't know. What I also found is that children who come to school late, they end up in panic mode, worried to death they're not going to get their breakfast because they missed it. And the doors closed. A lot of people now don't eat breakfast at home. Um, a lot of people wake up. This is what happens. And I don't know where in Ohio this is, but this is this, this is for all of Ohio. The, the thing that's being discussed is for all of Ohio. Um, but a lot of times people wake up now and they see their mother is like drinking. You know, she's like drunk and she's in a house dress and she's wandering around and... Uh, uh, she's not like cooking eggs for them and their father's d dead or missing. And so it's a kid like that who like wakes up, mom's drunk already. She's like laughing to herself at the table, looking at old pictures going, <laughs> and she's coming in and out of laughing and crying. Going, <laughs> and then the kid is like, hi mom, I love you. And then gives her a kiss on the head, and she's like, look at you when you were a baby. Ah! And she's crying and laughing, and she's kind of rocking. Like, sometimes they rock back and forth at the table like this. Or maybe she's not saying anything. Maybe the kid wakes up, and he walks downstairs into the kitchen, and the mother's just kind of, like, rocking back and forth. And then the father is maybe out uh, tilling the land. He's tilling the land. Or maybe he's uh, dead. Uh, or maybe he's, I don't know, you know, doing something else. So the kids now, they don't have the breakfast, right? They're not able to, like, it's not like people, you know, we grow up with those 1950s commercials where like a mom is making eggs or making pancakes, but that's not true. Or like mom sometimes is working now. Like sometimes kids wake up and the house is empty because the parents are at work, right? So then the kids aren't going to go home. I mean, they're not going to go downstairs and fend for themselves. Uh, they need to go and get a breakfast at school. But a lot of people are against that. And, and I, I don't, I mean, there might be a good reason for it, why a kid shouldn't have a breakfast in school. Maybe, maybe they should figure it out. I don't know. I'm, I'm, a, I'm in the middle on this. I'm undecided. Should children eat? You know what I mean? Like, this is a good question. I don't think it's as easy. It's, I don't think it's as easy as people make it out to be. People just go, oh, yeah, we have the money, feed them. Yeah, but hold on a minute. You know, I don't know if that's, a good idea. I know that, for example, lunch, eating lunch for me, uh, ruined a lot of opportunities for me because we would eat in, in mortgages, we would eat such a big lunch that uh, many of us would fall asleep in our chair or go into that state where you're kind of asleep uh, because you've had so much uh, carbohydrates or sugar, you're kind of like checking in and out. And maybe that's the problem here is that we need to have kids kind of being like on a fast and healthy, but um, I'm unsure. I, I welcome anybody that's had experience with this, the pro-hungry children and people that are anti-hungry children. I, I, I appreciate like a debate either, either way. It's, um, it, it, it's it, it, we need stronger kids, healthier kids, and I don't know if that requires feeding them or not feeding them. That's a question, you know? I love Bespoke Post because if you take the quiz at boxofawesome.com, what you're doing is giving somebody a gift that keeps on giving. 
They get a box every single month with a bunch of cool stuff in it, tailored to their own interests and things they like. Each box is valued at around $70, but you pay a fraction of that price. All of the things in these boxes, it could be like camping stuff or things to make cocktails or things to grill, any cool stuff for personal grooming or out being an outdoorsman. Again, it's whatever you like. We're an outdoors lady. Um, box of Awesome, you're supporting small businesses because all of these things in these boxes come from small businesses. 90% of everything comes from a small up-and-coming brand really in America. And it's free to sign up. You can skip a month or cancel any time. It's great for anybody going away, moving to a new city, going to college. You want them to think about you throughout the year. Get 20% off your first monthly box when you sign up at boxofawesome.com. Enter the code Tim Dillon at checkout. That's boxofawesome.com. Code Tim Dillon for 20% off your first box. Boxofawesome.com. Code Tim Dillon. I love these beds. Everyone asks me, what are the beds you have uh, uh, in your Long Island house? They're so cool. I'm like, they're Helix. And everybody goes, really? And I go, yeah. Helix is amazing, Okay. I'm telling you right now, I I have a lot of beds. I've spent a lot more money on beds, and people like the Helix beds better than the other more expensive beds, and so do I. Um, I love Helix. You just take a, you know, quiz. You take a quiz. How do you sleep? What's your deal? You're like a hot sleeper, cold sleeper. You side, back, stomach. You sleep like a bat, like you know, like tied to something <laughs> and hanging. I don't know. But whatever it is, Helix is going to find the right mattress for you, right? They have everything for all kinds of different sleepers. I mean, I'm telling you right now, you take the Helix sleep quiz and find your perfect mattress in under two minutes. And your personalized mattress is shipped straight to your door free of charge. Helix knows there's no better way to test out a new mattress than by sleeping on it in your own home. That's why there's a 100-night trial and a 10- to 15-year warranty to try out your new Helix mattresses. They are confident in the product, it is a good product. I mean, we advertise a lot of stuff on the show, um, and I try to use as much of it as I can. Helix is something we actually use. Everybody likes these beds. There's nobody that is uh, uncomfortable or anything with these beds. So go to helixsleep.com slash Tim D. That's helixsleep.com slash Tim D. And uh, I'm telling you right now, you will not regret it. I personally endorse all of these um, mattresses. And uh, everyone I know really does, too. And it, everybody loves them. So helixsleep.com slash Tim Day. You know, these residents of East Palestine, is it Palestine, 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 Palestine? Palestine. Palestine, Ohio. The residents of Palestine, Ohio, in my estimation, are being uh, a little dramatic and they are being ungrateful uh, for the government uh, because, like I said, the... Uh, the, the the EPA, people like that, have came down to Palestine, Ohio, and they've drank uh, a, a, a glass of water that they're claiming is from, uh, you know, the water system. It was probably Fiji. But even still, even performatively, I think that's a nice thing to do. I think it's a nice thing to do. And there's just a lot of whining, and now people are saying that... Uh, you know, it's the vinyl chloride, and I'm having headaches. And a lot of it, to be honest with you, it's bad diet. A lot of these headaches are bad diet. It's high sugar, high carbs. Watch the Joe Rogan experience. Uh, you need to switch to a carnivore keto diet because a lot of these people in Palestine, Ohio, are, you know, high on sugar all day. And these are the headaches because you're coming down off sugar. And this is really bad. So I think it's primarily diet related. A lot of what they're experiencing... I think it's maybe anxiety, and I think it's maybe stress. I don't think it has anything to do with all the vinyl chloride burning up the sky. I think that's such a jump. It's such a jump to make, like, just because a train, 11 train cars full of vinyl chloride exploded in your town, that's the reason you're itching. It's such a jump. When we know dairy is inflammatory. It's hugely inflammatory. People get rashes all the time with dairy. When I was a kid, I would get rashes with ketchup. And I love ketchup, and I eat it all the time, and I shouldn't. It's liquid sugar paste, but it's so good. But it gives you rashes. You can get, some people get rosacea from nightshades, which is like eggplant, tomatoes, and, and such. Things of that nature. So what you're seeing here. I believe, the Tim Dillon Show believes, you're seeing diet-related illnesses in, in East Palestine, 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 
Palos Verdes, wherever it is, <laughs> I see diet-related illnesses in Ohio being wrongfully attributed to the 11 train cars full of the vinyl chloride burning up the atmosphere. Um, let's hear what some of these ungrateful, dramatic, truly horrible people have to say about the things they're supposedly experiencing. All lies. These are all lies. So I thought I wasn't sure if I, if I was really smelling what I was smelling and feeling the way I was feeling. Um, and then less than five to ten minutes after I started smelling it, my son woke up out of a dead sleep, violently shaking, throwing up, totally disoriented, begging for water. Um, and he was not sick at all. Like, he, he just wasn't. There was no, no indications of a sickness before this. And it was shortly, just a few minutes after I started smelling it. So at that he point, I took him. We ran Kids out have nightmares. I mean, are, is this woman new? Kids have nightmares. They wake up often violently shaking and projectile vomiting, sort of like an exorcist scene, because maybe they're having a nightmare about, you know, not winning the big game at the school and getting the girl. This is what, you know, or it's the boogeyman's chasing them through the cornfield. These are common nightmares that kids have, and a lot of them react to this with violent shaking, uh, projectile vomiting, bleeding from the eyes. A lot of people have nightmares and they bleed from their eyes. So... This woman is trying to conflate these two unrelated things. Her son, uh, middle of the night, doing an exorcist. And the 11 cars of vinyl chloride burning up the sky and uh, the rivers and the uh, oceans and the lakes and the air and the dogs and the cats and the birds and the bees. And everybody getting, you know. So, really, it's the conflation of two completely unrelated things. The small chemical... Armageddon, and her son waking up in the middle of the night like Linda Blair. <laughs> just in case. And, um, let's let's see someone else again, because I feel like this woman's a liar and I don't like liars. Let's see what else we have. This looks like a fun crew. Oh, ever since and no, until like the 9th of February. Until the 9th of February. Yeah. Um, and were any of you all home when it happened as well or? I actually was home. I jumped out of bed. Unlike him, we didn't think we were getting evacuated. We all stood back there and watched it. I texted her, and she's like, I'm staying here, no problem. And then finally they knocked on her door and forced her out of bed. Well, I don't know. At the area, we've had a lot of suicides with the railroad, the railroad tracks. There's a lot. So that's my first thought was, who hit the train now? Like, I wasn't thinking, like, chemical warfare here. So that was my thought. She's like, dude, it's exploding. So yeah, my uh, my initial thought I was downtown I was walking, and uh, I thought it was weird the train. I mean the trains stop over the intersection from time to time. I just hop through them. When I were at this corner on the Clark Street, you could see the flames up in the air. And I work at that building right down there. Yep. So I thought my shop was on fire. So I went running up there to check on the kiln hand, check on everything. Back end of our building caught fire. So I actually for some reason stood out there and watched it for about 20 minutes, like probably from me to you do it. Right. Like, because <laughs> like you said, we didn't know what it was. Right. And are you all back uh, back working in there? Is the de building yeah. damaged? Yeah. Oh, yeah. They, as soon as the evacuation lifted, they were back in work, of course. Back to work. I like it. <laughs> back to work. This is good. That's America. You watch the explosion. You get a nice little break. It's a nice little break. But then you're back to work. You can't use this as some lazy excuse to not go to work just because you now have a permanent headache. You have to get back to work Work helps you, and it, people don't realize this, that, if, uh, you know, that, that, you know, there's so much anti-work sentiment in America all the time now. Um, like, oh, children shouldn't work, it's child labor, or elderly people shouldn't work. It, there's no, that's not dignified, and they're, they're old, and we should care for them. They shouldn't work, and uh, disabled people shouldn't work, and people with stage four cancer shouldn't work. There's always this, like, a rigmarole, like, oh, they shouldn't work, they shouldn't work. Uh, let's figure it out. Oh, they shouldn't work. Oh, she has a brain tumor and two months to live. She shouldn't work. It's like, really? Work actually takes your mind off these things, and it's actually nice. So what's encouraging to me is that while the smoke is still in the air, these people are back at their jobs because that's really the ticket to the train, so to speak, that leads them out of this situation. This woman is now... What is she complaining about her Sports face? Her and her boyfriend Chris, after being evacuated, 
Sanders came back home today. In this town. But she says she broke out in a rash almost instantly. I undressed to get into the shower, and I had a rash all over the side of my face, on both sides, and all over my chest. Take a look at these photos of her this morning after coming back on her property. The rash all over her face, neck, and chest. My boyfriend Chris also had a rash down his left side, and I mean, to, to this moment, right now, I have just a, a really low-grade constant headache. They live nearly a mile from the derailment. Well, they shouldn't be seeing each other naked if they're unmarried. <laughs> That's a huge problem right now is a cohabitation outside of the bond of marriage. I'll hear nothing of what they have to say. My point about this whole thing is it's been, it's been completely mismanaged uh, by, uh, like, you know, all of the, uh, the... The government really needs to go and tell these people, and they are, but the government needs to not only tell these people they're fine, this is actually a good thing. It's actually a positive thing. So the government has really failed. We're losing the propaganda war. We're, it, it's called soft power, meaning that it's not only, you know, uh, about, you know, military uh, power in America. It's about propaganda, and it's about the war of ideas, and it's about information. We've heard all of this. That's not only foreign policy. It's domestic, too. The government needs to show all these people how lucky they are to live in a country where chemicals are so prevalent that occasionally they spill. Think of the loveliness of living in a land where you can get all the chemicals you want. <laughs> There's so many chemicals that occasionally they topple over and no one's concerned about how much they've lost. They're just complaining about their bleeding eyes and skin falling off their face. What they should be focused on is how abundant this vinyl chloride is, how much of it, how easily it is to synthesize, how we can make more and more of it, and, and that's really the, the answer here is like, thank you, God, that I live in a country with all the chemicals I could ever want on a choo-choo train going through my backyard. How lucky am I? How many people live in places where they are literally, uh, they cannot get anything. They can't get anything ever. In America, there is so much vinyl chloride that... <laughs> No matter when you need it, what if, and this seems like weird to say, and I know people are going to ridicule me, what if some of the people in this town needed vinyl chloride <laughs> and now it's free for them? Is that not something we should consider? What if some of the people in this town were like, honey, I'm going out to get some vinyl chloride, I'll be back a little bit, and then they're like, oh my God, the Lucky Charms truck has uh, <laughs> toppled over, and we're knee-deep in marshmallows, thank Christ. <laughs> because now it's... So I, I think there's many things to consider here. Now, what is Trump saying about this? Is he... Uh, what's, he what's he up to? Yeah, he was there speaking about uh, the railroad stuff. Here Palestine and to the nearby communities in Ohio and Pennsylvania, uh, we have told you loud and clear you are not forgotten. You are not forgotten. We stand with you. We There's pray for you, and we in the, in the, in will stay with you in your fight to help answer. Is that the mayor? Can you make that the accountability bigger? that you is that deserve? Really we'll have that accountability. Shirt? It'll all be out there no very way. clearly. Is that the mayor? It's the mayor. You want to hear a clip of him talking? I need to hear a clip yeah, of him. This man is amazing. Yeah, he was. I want to hear the mayor. I want to hear the goddamn mayor, who's wearing a purple shirt from DXL. Something I would buy. <laughs> this man is wearing similar fashion to me. He is more welcome to come if he wants to come. Uh, I was very frustrated last night. If you're talking about the comments I made last night, I was very frustrated. And, you know, I stand by those comments. But, um, yeah, if he wants to come, he's welcome. I like this, man. I like that he's in a DXL shirt. I like that he is uh, out there defending his town. We hope, we wish the best for everybody in, uh, in Palestine, Ohio. Of course, we have fans there. Should we do a show there? Should we do a benefit show, I'm not even kidding, should we do a comedy show to benefit the residents of East Palestine, Stan Stan, Ohio, from New York City? <laughs> because even though I don't fear the chemicals and I think everything's completely fine, and I think these people are just complaining over nothing, just some routine uh, leprosy, 
Um, I feel comfortable if we could do a benefit show for the residents of East Palestine, Ohio, from uh, Maine, the rocky coast of Maine, or, you know, in the, uh, you know, potentially in uh, Irvine, California. <laughs> but we should do, I, I literally am not kidding, we should do a benefit show for these people. I don't know where the what the money will be used for, but I would like to do a benefit show maybe from another part of Ohio because I don't think they have a venue for it there. I don't know. Or maybe they do. Should I go to East Palestine, Ohio to do a benefit show? Because these people need stuff. And, you know, here's what I think we could do with the money that we raise. We could buy more of the vinyl chloride they lost. <laughs> if we buy more of the chemical that they lost, is it not a successful endeavor? East Palestine Community Theater, where we sell real tickets. That's not going to be good. I want a, I want a big, big, big fucking theater uh, to benefit the people. You can do Dayton. In East Palestine, Ohio. I, w I think it's the right thing to do, and I'd like to do it. Stay tuned for that, by the way. Stay tuned for the benefit show being announced in East Palestine, uh, Ohio. I would like, I genuinely want to do one, and I want to see how I can do one. I think that could actually be really great. I'm telling you right now, everybody's using ExpressVPN because all of these private companies in the government, they're all spying on you, selling your information. It's not right. When you use ExpressVPN, your internet connection is rerouted through a secure encrypted server so that you can surf the web anonymously without anyone looking over your shoulder. Look, I know you probably think all you have to do is go into incognito mode, but that doesn't do it. You're wrong. You need to use ExpressVPN. Protect your privacy today and get three months of ExpressVPN for free. Wait a minute, what? Three months for free. Visit expressvpn.com slash Tim Dillon. That's E-X-P-R-E-S-S-V-P-N.com slash Tim Dillon. You get three months, 90 days for free with a one-year package. That's amazing. You're only paying for seven months. Again, expressvpn.com slash Tim Dillon. This is the service that everybody is using to keep themselves safe from online pirates, big tech, the big government, the, the Berenstein Bears, uh, the devil, everyone who will come and get you, this is what you want to be kept safe from. That's expressvpn.com slash Tim Dillon. Three months free. You're trying to ship some trank dope? Don't <laughs> do that. But if you are doing a lot of online e-commerce, and who isn't, you're going to need to really focus on the front office stuff. And what does that mean? Well, the origination, getting new clients, being creative, developing new kinds of marketing strategies. What you don't need to worry about is the back office, the shipping, keeping track of orders, making sure everything's been delivered and everybody's happy. Well, then how do I do that? How about ship station, okay? Ship station works with all the big carriers. They work with everybody, every single person. They're comparing rates, making sure you get the best. They effortlessly integrate everywhere you sell online, Amazon, Etsy, eBay, Shopify, and more. You manage every order from one simple dashboard. You automate routine shipping tasks, print shipping labels, easily compare rates and delivery times to optimize every shipment. It allows you to have a fully functioning back office where you are not doing anything that takes away from your origination of business, which is the most important thing to do. Keep growing your business all year with ShipStation. Use promo code Tim Dillon today at ShipStation.com to sign up for your free 60-day trial. That's Ship, S-H-I-P, Station, S-T-A-T-I-O-N, Ship station. It's a hard word, station. You don't spell it often. <laughs> Shipstation.com, promo code Tim Dillon. Shipstation.com, promo code Tim Dillon. We're talking about Trank today, folks. Trank. This is not an ad. Trank is a veterinary <laughs> drug, and it's worsening the fentanyl crisis. Uh, and I was watching a TV in Arizona, local news, and they were talking about Trank dope. This is what... Everybody's on now. Well, the kids, because fentanyl uh, is, I guess, fun for a little while until you realize there's harder shit out there. There's actually harder stuff than fentanyl. You know, the horrors of the world are unfolding now so quickly. Um, uh, you know, all of the nightmares, right? The, the, the chemical explosions and the economic inequality and Sam Smith 
you can't, fentanyl won't do it. You have to actually do something harder. And the Trank Dope is what will uh, get you to where you need to go. Because the fentanyl high is not enough to escape the nightmare. You need uh, xylazine, authorized uh, for animals. It's, this is a veterinary drug. Is one ingredient in an increasingly toxic brew of illicit drugs. This started with bath salts, um, you know, where it was like the the... The things about bath salts were like uh, like the the uh, headlines were insane. It was like a a woman ate a pit bull's. Oh, there was one headline where a woman strangled a pit bull to death on bath salts, or a man ate another man's face on bath salts. Like it was unbelievable. Like the behavior, the behavior that people exhibited when they were on bath salts. Yeah, I mean it's like. The attacker Rudy Eugene was shot dead by police who pleaded with him to stop, but only growls in response. So he, this is like a zombie in Miami. This is from bath salts. Uh, he's eating another man's face. The police are like, stop it. And he just went, ah. So that's, you know, the, nobody's exhibited that type of behavior. The bath salts. Now we have uh, Trank Dope. And Trank is like this homemade brew, this concoction of drugs to really, really get you to the point where you're kind of a zombie. Dealers may mix xylazine into fentanyl to save money. Federal law enforcement authorities said the drug known as Trank, among some users, can be purchased at low prices from Chinese suppliers and offset, uh, uh, and offset some of the opioid in the mix. And offset some of the opioid in the mix. Its presence in the drug supply is part of the arms race between criminals seeking to enhance their products and authorities trying to disrupt the market. So basically, people are like, throw a little trank in there, get a little trank, wet your beak, wet your whistle, and if you like it, you can come back. Um, so what this is doing to people is it's zombifying bodies. So they're, you're seeing severe wounds. Uh, they appear when users in, where users inject drugs and on other parts of the body. They start as like blisters, purple or white. They're in, in, encircled by red rings. It becomes like lesions. Um, they look like burn victims. Some people have legs amputated. I mean, I mean, it's really, it's zombifying people's bodies. Um, there's a 28-year-old Nathan Clark, a longtime opioid user. Despite the toll xylazine is exacting on his body, Mr. Clark said he can't stop using it. As part of his regular drug consumption, not taking it would send him into brutal withdrawal. The xylazine is tearing me apart, he said. I don't have skin on the top of my hands. You can see my tendons. You can see my bones. So this is uh, the new hot drug on the street, Trank Dope. And people are taking it even though they no longer have skin on their hands. They have tendon hands. And there, you can just see their tendons the way that you would do. It'd be like a health book. You would just see skeletal hands, and people are going. I'm still. They still got to do it because if not, what does this do for animals? Like, what kind of? What is this? This xylazine? Like, it's 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 utilized or it's authorized most often and utilized for animals, for cats or dogs or something. Um, it's a ho they use it on horses. It's oh, they use it on horse. All the good shit. <laughs> Gets used on horses. All the stuff that, you know, can really take you there, can get you there. Do we have a YouTube? Is there anyone on Trank Dope that we can, like, look at? Is there any type of exhibit A we can point to and say if... Because we want to make sure that you guys know who's on Trank Dope in your life, right? So um, if your son or daughter is sitting at the table with you, you want to make sure that you have all... Well, number one, if your son sits down or daughter and they don't have skin on the top of their hands, this is a big um, indicator that they're on Trank Dope. Truly. So if you're sitting there and they're like, oh, it's just a friend, you know, just hanging out, Mark. You go, hey, show me your hands. Show me your hands. Why? Just show them to me. You never trust anything I say. Show me your skinless hands. Do your hands have skin on them? Yeah, they do, I promise. Show them to me. Why don't you trust me that my hands have skin? Show me your hands! And then they just take their skinless skeletal hands and go, ah! And then you go, drank dope! So 
you have to make sure that your kids are not on Trank Dope. Let's see what else you could look for. So this is like getting bit by a brown recluse spider. Your skin becomes necrotic, meaning that it dies. The skin cells die and it gets hard. You can knock on it like, but that's a leg, a leg. Woof. Fentanyl, probably the most lethal street drug in modern history. Any worse, tonight we have the answer. Trank, drug users turned into real life zombies right down to the rotten flesh. We didn't want to believe it either, but it is real and it is here. All documented in this. I love the news voice when they're delivering this. They're like, there's zombies running around America. It seems like it's a bad movie, but it's real and it's here. The The Trank Dope is real and it's here. Threat of xylazine mixing with illicit drugs. Xylazine is an animal tranquilizer. Trank is what you get when you mix it with fentanyl. Lab hits for xylazine are up 112% in the West. Deaths are rising, too, into the triple digits. Xylazine has been confirmed in overdose deaths in Snohomish and King Counties, at least 12 that we know of. And those most familiar with the drug fear, it will get much worse. He didn't have a flesh-eating disorder. He didn't have an abscess. And he doesn't know how his finger went missing. And to me, that is just... By the way, she also looks horrible. (laughs) I mean, let's be very honest. This woman looks horrific. She looks like she's on Trank Dope. She's got dreads. This is a social worker? (laughs) This woman appears to be on... If you showed me that, I would say two words. Trank dope. Trank dope. (laughs) She's on trank. How do I trust her when she's on trank? How bad is it out there now that people just can't even smoke crack anymore? That doesn't do it for them? (laughs) They're like, crack won't even work anymore. I need trank. Let's see what this rest of this trank head has to say. said it was just... Miraculously gone. A narcotic nightmare. One young lady was telling me about it, and uh, she was saying that she used it and then was out and didn't remember anything. Moving like a chameleon through an already dangerous drug supply. That scared her enough to want to go to detox. As if fentanyl wasn't deadly enough, suppliers are mixing. Your children will move like chameleons through your home. Ingredient. Looking for Trank Dope with their necrotic dead skin lesions, giving you a clue that they're on the new hot street drug, Trank. They seem, everyone seems to kind of know what Trank Dope is. Rochelle Long is a mental health professional. She's like, listen, I use Trank occasionally. (laughs) I can do it responsibly. And clinics to brace themselves for the full on arrival of Trank. Trank is short for tranquilizer, in this case, xylazine. It's strong enough for big animals like horses. When it's mixed with fentanyl, it gives users a brand new kind of high. So, like, they start dancing, and they they seem kind of happy, and they're just having fun. Sounds great. To an immediate, like, <laughs> zombie-like trance. But then there is like, zombie. staring through you as if, like, a horror film. What it does to the so human it's like, body is It so starts terrible. out, you're like, what? It looks like what, a film bitches? And then it's like, I'm a zombie. Yeah, I mean, listen, I don't I'm not I don't really tell people what to do to have fun because like I think people need to figure that out on their on their own. Um with something like Trank, I will say that the downsides of the drug potentially may outweigh some of the positives. Like the dancing and the euphoria, I do think that there is a chance that the downsides of Trank are going to potentially on the scales outweigh the good, but I leave it up to you. I leave it up to you out there if you want to use it. If you are a user of Trank um, and you want to come on the show like via like <laughs> Zoom or something, you know, we're not, you're not coming near the studio, but <laughs> if you are on Trank and there's a way to get you to just tell us what it's like, I'm for that. You know, that seems to make sense. Thank you for listening, everybody. Uh, TimDillonComedy.com for live tickets. And we will see you on Patreon. And we'll see you next week.